Hello everybody and welcome back. So in this video I'm going to be sharing with you 18 Python modules you need to know. Now I've split these modules up into four different categories to make things a little bit easier for us and those categories are web development, data science, machine learning and AI, and graphical user interfaces. Near the end of the video I also share my personal favorite Python module so make sure you stay tuned to see what that is. Also make sure to share with me in the comments down below your favorite Python module and we'll get into the content in just a second after a word from our sponsor. I need to thank Simply Learn for sponsoring this video and introduce you to their machine learning certification course. In this course you will explore the necessary skills and techniques to become a machine learning engineer and unlock the power of this emerging field. Through 58 hours of online and instructor-led training, you'll work on four industry-based course projects and develop your skills through interactive coding activities and labs in Jupyter Notebooks. A few of the topics you'll learn include supervised and unsupervised machine learning, time series modeling, linear and logistic regression, decision trees, random forest classifiers, deep learning, and many other topics. This course comes with a 100% money-back guarantee, and you can get started today by hitting the link in the description. The first category of modules that I'd like to discuss is those that deal with web development and HTTP requests. Now Python is heavily known for backend web development and therefore you could assume that there's a lot of different modules available to make enterprise level websites in Python. Now the first module I want to talk about is actually the requests module. Now the request module is used to send HTTP requests with ease. It's very simple, it's easy to use, and is the most downloaded Python package today pulling in around 14 million downloads a week. And according to GitHub, it's actually depended upon by about 367,000 repositories. Now this next one that I'm going to talk about is actually more of a framework than it is a module, although you do install it, and that is called Django. Now Django is a web framework for Python. It's very heavyweight, and it's actually used by companies like Instagram and Tinder, or originally was used by them, to make their websites. So Django is a completely Python backend web framework. You can use other languages with it. You can connect it with other frameworks and it comes with a whole ton of tools and complex developer features that allow you to make well enterprise level websites. Now the next module that I want to talk about is Flask. Now Flask is kind of a competitor of Django. They're both web frameworks, although they do have some fundamental differences. So Django and Flask work similarly for basic websites, although Flask is much easier and faster to get set up. It's a much lighter weight web framework, and it do doesn't come with all of the tools and crazy things that come with Django. So if you wanted to know which one to pick, if you're using Django or Flask for web development, if you were trying to make a very serious website, do everything properly, have serious authentication, things like that, you'd probably use Django. But if you're doing more of a side project or something a little bit smaller, then you would likely want to pick Flask because that's a much easier module to get running and working with. Now the next module I want to talk about is Twisted. Now I don't know too much about this one, but I did want to throw it on my list because this is actually used for doing online game development. Now you can do other things with it as well, but essentially this allows communication between clients and servers very easily, and it'll just make your life a lot easier than having to program out your own socket server. So check that out if you're trying to do any kind of online interaction or you know real-time games or something like that with Python. Now the next module on our list is Beautiful Soup 4. Now I believe there's some other versions of this as well, you know, there's likely 3, 2, and 1, but Beautiful Soup is a great module for scraping the web. So if you're doing web scraping, you're trying to grab HTML data, Beautiful Soup can do that for you, and it's pretty easy to get that working. And the last module on my list for web development is Selenium. Now Selenium is used to do automation on websites, so essentially allowing you to either test your websites or to make some kind of bot that will interact with other websites. So you could do things like access HTML fields, you can move your mouse cursor around, you can click, you can access buttons. That's what a Selenium allows you to do. Cool module, I haven't played with it too much, although definitely something worth mentioning on this web development list. So the next category to dive into here is data science. Now Python is very popular for data science, and one of the reasons for that is all of the different modules that are available that make a data scientist's life much easier. For example, the first module on my list is NumPy. Now NumPy is an amazing module for doing any kind of mathematical operations in Python. So essentially what it allows you to do is work with array-like objects of multiple dimensions, so like matrices for example, and do all kind of complicated three-dimension, four-dimension, five-dimensional math very fast. And one of the reasons it's so fast actually is because a lot of the operations are implemented in C, which means using NumPy will actually make your program a lot faster than if you were to, say, not use that module and implement those operations in standard Python. Now the next module to discuss in this data science category is Pandas. 
Now pandas is great for reading and working with data frames and just data in general. It makes it very easy to manipulate data, work with data, clean data, get rid of columns, and everything that you pretty much would want to do with data. Now the next module that works with these two very nicely is matplotlib. Now matplotlib is used for doing data visualizations, so it's really good for visualizing your data, making plots, make, making charts, and it's also really good for working with machine learning models and visualizing things like say a loss function or the amount of accuracy that your machine learning model is getting over a certain amount of epochs per se. So now we'll move on to the last two modules in my list, the first of which is NLTK. Now NLTK stands for Natural Language Toolkit, and it's used for doing any kind of data processing or text processing. So if you have textual data and you want to remove things like punctuation or spaces or tokenize your data, for example, Natural Language Toolkit can help you do that as a ton of tools for working with text based data and well, natural language processing. And for the last module on our list, we have OpenCV. Now, OpenCV is an extremely powerful module that's used for many different things. However, its main focus is on image and video data processing. So it can do things like feature detection and description. It actually does object recognition and detection as well. And has some machine learning models built into the module that you can use to manipulate data, uh, work with images. You can draw things on images. It's just an extremely powerful module for really doing anything with image or video data. Now this transitions us nicely into the next category, which is machine learning and AI. And the first module I have in this category is TensorFlow. Now TensorFlow is by far the most powerful module in this section. It's maintained and supported by Google, and you can do some extremely powerful things with it without really having a great understanding of how all the math works. And that's the benefit of TensorFlow is it allows you to do very powerful things. Like you can do neural networks, you can run standard machine learning algorithms, you can create convolutional neural networks, you can do things like neural style transfers, and there's all kinds of tutorials and guides on the TensorFlow website that can help you get started learning how to use this module. Now this transitions us into Keras. So Keras is a module as well in Python that is actually a higher level API for TensorFlow. So you can do some pretty cool things with TensorFlow. It is maintained and supported by Google, and that means that there's some great technologies and some innovations that have been done and used in TensorFlow. But for some of us that are more beginners, we'd probably want to be working with Keras. Now what Keras allows us to do is access some of these TensorFlow features in an easier way. You can almost think of it as like a wrapper for TensorFlow, where it just makes it much easier to make models and do things quickly. And that's kind of when we would use Keras. Then that leads us into PyTorch. Now, I don't know much about PyTorch, so I'll refrain from talking about it a ton. Although I do know that it is another leading module in terms of machine learning and AI in Python. I believe it's a little bit behind TensorFlow, but definitely something worth checking out. And finally, we conclude with Scikit-Learn. Now scikit-learn is another great module in Python. This one is definitely not as powerful as the previous mentioned modules, but that's okay. It's a little bit lighter weight and allows us to work with some things like clustering algorithms, linear regression, support vector machines, and some simpler things that yes, you could do in TensorFlow, but maybe you don't want to use a module that massive. You'd rather use something like scikit-learn. The next modules that I'd like to discuss are those that are aimed towards building graphical user interfaces in Python. So the first option here is Kivi. Now, Kivi is a great module for actually building applications that will scale to all different platforms. So any Kivi app that you build will work on Linux, it will work on Mac, it will work on Windows, it'll work on iOS, and it should work on Android. Now, it's a little bit harder than that to actually get those applications on the device, but the idea is that Kivi is pretty simple, it's pretty easy to use, and that anything you make will work for all different devices. Now, the next framework or the next option on our list is PyQt5. Now PyQt5, in my opinion, is the best graphical user interface builder for Python. It has the most options and flexibility in terms of what you can actually do with it. You can even use CSS styling to, well, style your application. And in fact, an example of something that's built in PyQt5 is actually the Spider IDE. So I believe most of that, if not all of that, is actually built using purely PyQt5 with an entire Python backend. So that should prove to you that if you want to make a more complex desktop application with Python, this should be the module that you pick. It's a little bit more capable than the next one on my list, which is tkinter. So tkinter is an older module. It is also used for building graphical user interfaces. It's fairly similar to PyQt5 in terms of how the interfaces look, although it's definitely not as capable, but I would say it's a little bit easier for beginners and people that are just looking to get something whipped up uh, pretty fast and pretty easily. Now, before I wrap up the video, I want to tell you about my favorite module in Python that hasn't fit any of the categories mentioned before. 
and that is Pygame. Now Pygame is the first Python module that I ever learned and it's what really got me into Python programming and why I recommend it to any beginners or people that maybe aren't as motivated to program to use. It's not very practical in terms of building actual large games, but if you want to build some simple 2D games or just work on your skills and build something fun, then you can definitely do that in Pygame. Now, if you want some inspiration for some things that you can work with in Pygame, I should be flashing some on the screen right now, but I've made all kinds of tutorial series on how to make things like Tetris, how to make uh, Snake, how to make other random platformer games. And if you know what you're doing with Pygame, you can make some pretty powerful and impressive things. So that has been it for the 18 Python modules you need to know. Now, do you think I forgot any modules? Definitely let me know in the comments down below. And as always, if you liked the video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hopefully I will see you again in another YouTube video.